<laughs> I love controversy. <laughs> <laughs> reporters are always looking for the opposite or contrarian viewpoint mm -hmm. so if you have it and your spokesperson has it i would say lean into it as much as possible and that can come in a lot of different forms you know if you really want to control the message i would suggest writing an op-ed for fortune or TechCrunch or recode mm -hmm. or whatever um if you're a little bit more comfortable and maybe you're not in a regulated uh, environment, then, you know, you can test the waters a little bit and be controversial. I think the best form of, you know, where you can do that the best is probably on TV. You mm -hmm. should definitely be careful because then it can get cut up and replayed in a lot of different ways. And yeah. we've seen that happen. Um, at the beginning of COVID, we were representing one of the physicians um, who was working with Dr. Fauci and I mean, he had never done TV in his life. He had zero Instagram followers, zero like any followers, to be honest. Negative we had to like followers. <laughs> negative followers. He showed up to do his first broadcast. It was a dark room. The background was awful. The lighting Ouch. was awful. I think he was, I don't even know where he was looking. So, you know, a lot of work had to go into grooming him. Mm -hmm. But by the end of it, he was on all the late night shows, the daily shows. Like wow. it was insane. So. It's amazing. A little bit of work goes a long ways. Talk a little bit about crisis communication. And, you know, the the reason I want to bring that up is, you know, at a super high level, it feels like, you know, say something very generic. All of us, whether individuals or companies, you know, we're going to go through good times, we're going to go through bad times. And so it feels like a, a PR strategy is recognizing that there's good times and bad times and then being able to help people when they're in a moment. That's not so great. You know, and an example today that I feel like is a company that... Um, I don't know, is going through that is definitely Peloton, where I'm like, I think they make great products. I think it seems to be a great company. It's obviously in a in a moment in time where things are not great <laughs> from a bunch of different angles in terms of how they're perceived. What what do you, I guess, how do you approach that? How do you think about and work with companies when they're in a not so great moment? So first, I just have to say, I'm obsessed with what's going on with Peloton right now <laughs> because it's such a classic dumb PR case where probably some junior internal employee basically, and just like that, reached out to them. They said, hey, we really want to feature Peloton, blah, mm. blah, blah. And the junior employee probably said, oh my God, I have this great opportunity to be on the show. And they're all excited. And then they forgot that that was only 25% of the job. 75% yeah. of the job is what episode? Who's going to be riding the bike? What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. You know, like, and clearly none of that. There was no dialogue on any of that. And the show actually reached out to us to use our office for one of the episodes. So, like, you know, I know how these things work. And with billions, there was a lot of back and forth, as I'm sure you can imagine, with the producer when I was working for Steve. And so, one, not every opportunity is a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I tell every single person, who's ever worked for me in communications and especially at Bevel, when you get on the phone with a reporter or any opportunity, you should really understand if it's a conference or if it's a media opportunity, things are different. But let's say it's a conference and your executive is going to be on a panel. Mm -hmm. You should always figure out like who else is going to be on the panel. Do we want to sit next to that person? Does that person have a viewpoint that's aligned with our values? Is it going to be stale? Is it not going to be stale? Mm -hmm. Can we figure out how to just do a keynote? That would be for a conference. Um, for broadcast, you always want to know who's going on before and who's going on after. Mm -hmm. So like if someone from Robinhood was going on today because the stock price is down to $13 a share, and then you have your executive in fintech on after talking about, you know, rainbows and roses and how amazing the product is. It's probably not going to come across that well because yeah. they're going to talk about the Robin Hood and like, oh, fintech is down overall. There's a lot of overvaluation. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're seeing a market correction? Um, and the same goes with media interviews. So reporters will call, oh, I want to get on the phone. Everybody thinks it's a great opportunity it might not be a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. 
And it I could sounds keep like, going on about crisis forever. Uh, no, well, yeah, yes, I think that would be great. I would love to hear you talk a little bit more. I was just going to say um, one thing, which is, you know, it sounds like at a meta level, what you're really saying is it's great to land the opportunity, but then you really want to try to control it and control the right. outcome and make sure it's going to be an amazing outcome. Right. I always say no bad stories, at least not on my watch. I don't want any surprises. I always try to understand exactly how the piece is going to read. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, helps also manage the relationship internally. So I can go to the CEO at Acorn. He's never going to be surprised by what's coming out ever. Um, Another thing that happens in crisis, and this is like probably one of the funniest things to watch from my perspective Someone will reach out and they'll say like, oh, all these allegations, here's all my questions, I'm writing this piece. And then the instinct always, every single time is like, oh my God, do they have this story? They're going to write a hit piece, but we didn't even do this. Like, let's bring the lawyers in. Let's have the lawyers call the reporter. Like, we're going to sue them. It's just, it's all crazy. So Mm -hmm. like, instead of getting very emotional, I would say figure out like really tactically does the reporter even have a story probably Mm not nine out of ten times they don't have a story because you need a valid source and so what i've seen a lot of sort of like very green uh pure people do is they'll write back answers to every single question (laughs) and then basically you (laughs) you just became the source like you just gave them the story so if any communications people are listening or any CEOs, I would say don't do that. Uh, maybe get on the phone and speak on background and go line by line and just, you know, approach it as if you were a lawyer mm-hmm. and factually just say this isn't accurate. Let me tell you what is accurate. 